The image of the student having fun is an old one, here illustrated by the musical The Student Prince. Now this musical was based in a time when higher education was for the rich and when it could afford to be inefficient. Now we desire higher education for the masses and we can't afford this inefficiency. It's 30 years since I started teaching at Institute of Technology Sligo and 12 years since I started working with distance learners online. Now during that 12 years I made two significant observations that have led me to the conclusion that the way we approach higher education needs to be changed. But the change I'm proposing here is not a small one. We should get rid of full-time undergraduate education. Now in our early days teaching online we were worried that some people might be skeptical so we always ensured that our online students sat the same examinations as our full-time students. But we very quickly noticed that they did much better in these examinations than the full-time students. Now we would have liked to attribute this to our great online teaching methods but we knew it was more likely to be the fact that they were situated in workplaces where they could see the relevance of what they were learning. Although the first observations came early, when we ran our first exams, the second observation came much more slowly, and it was that online learning has the potential to be much more cost-effective than campus-based education, and unlike in this slide, of even higher quality. So I was led to the conclusion that undergraduate education in most countries is more expensive than it needs to be, and less effective than it should be, or could be. So. If this were true, how might you design an alternative approach to undergraduate education? Well, as it happens, such an approach already exists in the apprenticeship model. We've long recognised the fact that the young best way for people to learn a trade was to combine work with learning. In fact, it's only fairly recently that many higher professions, such as architects, lawyers and accountants, have moved away, away from this work-based approach to learning. However, we have to admit that there are good reasons why universities emerged in the Middle Ages as repositories of knowledges and places where rich young men were sent to become familiar with all the advanced knowledge of the time. As we moved towards massification of education during the last century, it was expedient that other forms of higher education copied this model and even tried to gain some of the status of these institutions by taking the title of university. But this is the 21st century and we're now well into the information age. We don't need to travel to access the knowledge of our greatest minds or to enter into rich discussions with fellow learners. We're not working under the constraints of the past that required physical access to these centres of learning. Now, in addition to this, the cost of higher education has been steadily increasing to the point where states if not, people can barely afford it. As manufacturing and service companies constantly strive to reduce their costs and improve their quality, do we, we as educators not owe the same to our funders and learners? A better education at a lower cost. So I'd like to propose that we get rid of full-time undergraduate education and replace it with work-based learners, where the learners take jobs, even menial ones, in workplaces closely associated with the profession they wish to pursue and take most of their modules online, attending the colleges occasionally to help build relationships with their classmates or maybe carry out activities that are best done in that setting. Now, it may be necessary to stretch out the courses over a longer time, but it will result in significant savings, including the opportunity to earn while they're studying, and more importantly, it should result in better learning outcomes. Now, will our young people be mature enough to survive in this new model? Well, many believe that they were in the past and perhaps we don't challenge them enough these days. What about the social and personal development of a college education? Well, I made this point to my brother who entered the civil service at 18 years of age in 1972 that as I had been to university, I was more developed socially and personally than he was. I'll leave it to you to imagine what his response was. What about our guilt at denying our young people the pleasure of a college education? My kids certainly want to go to college. Uh, well, you could argue that spending the state's money on pleasures we can't afford might just fit the definition of extravagance. Thank you.